Haley. Um, can I have a show of hands if anybody here has been to SeaWorld before? Okay, so I'm guessing you guys have also probably seen the show, the show that goes on with like the orcas and stuff. Um, actually, the picture on the far, uh, well, to my right, is actually me and my grandpa in front of an orca, well, a fake orca. But we went to SeaWorld when I was little, and the thing I remember most is the orca shows. And it's one of the best things about SeaWorld. However, their treatment of their orcas has been a hot topic of debate for a few years now. Today, I'm going to inform you about the treatment of their orcas and tell you their story about what happened to their killer whale shows. This is an important topic because we should care about what happens to animals that are being kept in our care. Humans are in charge of helping these animals, so it is really important to know when more harm is being done than good. I've done a lot of research over the past few weeks on how these orcas are being kept, and I wanna make sure that you guys have the best information available to use. So let's dive in and explore the difference between orcas in the wild and orcas in SeaWorld. Then we can take a look at the life of one of the most popular orcas in SeaWorld, Tilikum, and finally, see what has happened to SeaWorld over the past few years. Orcas in SeaWorld and orcas in the wild live two very different lives. Orcas in the wild usually live from about 50 to 60 years old, but orcas in SeaWorld only average the lifespan of about 14 years old. One of the most well-known orcas name was Shamu, but the Shamu you and I know may be different than the original Shamu. The original Shamu actually died in 1971, but SeaWorld saw the popularity behind it and decided to trademark the name and use it for all their other whales to come. Orcas are also used to swimming up to 40 miles each day and diving up to 500 feet deep. But in captivity, orcas are kept in different swimming pools which have a range from eight feet deep to 50 feet in depth. Because of this fact, orcas in captivity have a collapsed dorsal fin. As you can see in some of these pictures, their fin kind of like falls over. Um, only 1% of whales have this in the wild, but in captivity, 97% of orcas have that. Many orcas also end up getting burnt by the sun since sometimes they can be in those shallow pools for many hours on end. Um, and they also don't have a lot of space in the pools. So a lot of times the orcas can get into fights with one another. Um, when in the wild, if they got into a fight, they could just kind of swim off and go get some space somewhere else. But in captivity, there's not a lot of spaces to go. This really impacted one of the whales named Tilikum. He was put in a tank with two other orcas and they were all from different regions. So they don't really speak the same language because orcas actually do speak different languages based on where they're from. So he would often get ganged up on, which would be really sad, and it led to him kind of being a little aggressive. Um, Tilikum was taken from his family at the age of two to be sold to Sealand, where he was raised until the age of 10. Um, at the age of 10, he grabbed hold of a trainer's boot and actually dragged her in the water and killed her along with two other orcas. Um, he was then sold to SeaWorld because Sealand didn't want him anymore due to that incident that happened. Um, he was trained for shows and actually used for his semen. Over his lifespan, he was used to sire 21 different orcas, and only nine of them were still alive as of July 2021. Many people were concerned that Tilikum kept breeding because he had an aggressive history towards humans, which actually leads us into our second killing. On the morning of July 6, 1999, it was discovered that a man was naked and draped over Tilikum's back. It was uncertain exactly what happened since no one was there to see it, but it is thought that he wanted to go skinny dipping into Tilikum's sleep tank and try and like get a kiss from the whale, which probably wasn't smart. And Vic Abbey, SeaWorld's executive vice president, said at the time, quote, not only was that incredibly bad judgment to try and take a dip with a killer whale, but remember, this water is 50 degrees ice cold water, end quote. It's pretty obvious that this death may have been like both parties' fault, like it wasn't all on Tilikum. But the death of Don Branchow is a different story. On February 24th, 2010, at the end of a special Dine with Shamu dinner show, Don was laying next to Tilikum when suddenly he grabbed a hold of her arm and like dragged her in the water. Employees tried distracting him and after 45 minutes of this, Tilikum finally released Don's body. An autopsy report revealed that she died from drowning and from blunt force trauma. Her spinal cord was severed and she had fractures to her jawbone, ribs, and her cervical vertebra. Her scalp was completely 
torn off and her left elbow and left knee have been dislocated. Interestingly enough, in the wild orcas, there's actually no fatalities due to humans from orcas in the wild, but there have been four deaths um, from orcas in captivity to humans, and three out of four of them have actually been from Tilikum. After this incident, OSHA immediately jumped in and banned the trainers from being in the pools with the orcas. OSHA also gave SeaWorld $75,000 in fines, and they claimed that SeaWorld had violated employee safety by putting the trainers in the water with the captive orcas. SeaWorld did not react well to this ban, and they took it to court and repeatedly tried to lift it until 2014, when it was quite obvious that OSHA wasn't going to budge on any of their violations or fines. In 2013, a documentary was released called Blackfish, which brought the treatment of killer whales to the public eye. And let's just say that the public was not pleased after watching this documentary. Blackfish made headlines, and the public outcry was unimaginable. There was an outcry for change, and it took SeaWorld a couple years, but they did, in fact, listen. They ended their theatrical orca shows in San Diego in 2017, and in Orlando and San Antonio in 2019. They also decided to end its orca breeding program permanently in 2016, and in 2020, SeaWorld replaced its one ocean theatrical show to a new orca show that's labeled Orca Encounter, which is going to be more of an educational orca show and less of like a showy, flashy, let's see what kind of tricks they can do show. SeaWorld has also been backing off of its Shamu branding by changing the name from Special Dine with Shamu to Dine with Orcas. The orcas are far from leaving SeaWorld though, since they cannot be put back in the wild due to the fact that many of the orcas were either brought in at a young age or bred and kept in captivity for most of their lives. And many of the orcas due to this have actually lost some of their natural tendencies to maybe like hunt and stuff, but SeaWorld still has 20 orcas spread throughout its three parks in the United States. So if you still wanna see an orca show, they're still performing and they probably will be for a good probably 20 to 30 more years. Overall, the orcas at SeaWorld are different than the orcas in the wild. Tilikum was an orca that played a huge part in everything that happened to SeaWorld, to the deaths and to the birthing of new orcas for their bird birthing program, and how after the death of Don Branchow, SeaWorld changed and switched its focus from theatrical shows to educational shows. It's important to know what is happening to the animals in captivity because we can use them to learn new things. And it is important to know how to take care of them so they can live long and happy lives. I hope that my speech has helped you guys understand why SeaWorld changed their orca shows and has helped open your eyes to how orcas at SeaWorld were being treated. Thank you.